This is the Pipeline Podcast, where you'll get to know the next generation of Columbus Blue Jackets. Let's see who's coming down the pipeline today with your host, Dylan Tyre. Welcome to the Pipeline Podcast. Happy to have you with me this week, and I am eager for this week's episode. I think we're doing something a little bit different this week, and I say that because we're talking with a Blue Jackets goaltending prospect this week. And not any goaltending prospect, the youngest goaltending prospect in the Blue Jackets organization, and that is Jet Greaves. He's in his rookie season as a pro this year. He's played between the ECHL with the Blue Jackets affiliate there, the Kalamazoo Wings, and he's played with the Cleveland Monsters, the Blue Jackets AHL affiliate. Now, Jet Greaves, he's a 20-year-old goaltender from Ontario, so a Canadian kid. He stands at six foot, 170 pounds, and he became a member of the Blue Jackets organization in July of this past offseason, this past summer. He finished up his junior career playing with the Barry Colts of the Ontario Hockey League, then signed a minor league contract with the Blue Jackets AHL affiliate, the Cleveland Monsters, who I just mentioned, and he's been good between the AHL and the ECHL this season. At the time of this recording in the American Hockey League, he's played 22 games where he's 10-7-2 with a 2.67 goals against average and a 9-10 save percentage, and he has had a wacky, wacky season. You know, like I said, he's gone between the ECHL and the American Hockey League. He's also gotten his first NHL call-up this season, which does lead to him being a tried-and-true member of the Blue Jackets organization now and a real Blue Jackets prospect. Remember, like I said, he signed an American Hockey League deal, a minor league deal, with the Cleveland Monsters this past summer. That makes him part of the Blue Jackets organization, but not a direct property of the Blue Jackets in that sense. But what happened earlier this season was, and really just about a month ago, was that both Blue Jackets goaltenders, Jonas Corposalo and Elvis Merzlikens, were unavailable. Daniil Tarasov, also unavailable. He's out for the season after undergoing hip surgery. So that left J.F. Berube, who's spent the bulk of this season in the American Hockey League. He was called up to be the Blue Jackets starting goaltender. Then they needed a backup as well. So Jet Greaves was that guy for the Blue Jackets. But to get him to the National Hockey League, they had to sign him to a three-year entry-level contract. That was a necessity to get him to the NHL. But it's not like he signed that deal, and now the Blue Jackets have forgotten about him. No, he earned that contract. It's not like, you know, this guy, oh, we have to give this guy a deal. No, from the people that I've talked to, Jet Greaves earned that contract in the Blue Jackets organization, and it's something that had been talked about before that move was even necessary to bring him to the National Hockey League. As I mentioned, he's got great numbers this season. He's got a terrific work ethic, great head on his shoulders, and a guy that's on an upward trajectory in the Blue Jackets organization. You're going to hear about it from Jet, his time in the Blue Jackets organization, becoming a goaltender, that sort of thing. And I'm really, really excited for you to hear this interview. I think Jet is unlike any prospect we've really ever talked to before on the Pipeline podcast. Really interesting guy, a smart player, a smart person. Um, more so than anything, and I'm just excited for you to get to know Jet. I think he is a, a really, really interesting guy, and I'm I'm excited to to talk to him more um, as he spends more time in this Blue Jackets organization. So we're going to talk to Jet. We're also going to welcome in Blue Jackets development coach Brad Teeson to get an organizational perspective on Jet Greaves and his development, so more good stuff to come from Brad Teeson as well. But first, right now, let's get into it. Here he is, Blue Jackets prospect Jet Greaves. All right, Jet, you're a Canadian boy, so very, very easy to get into the game of hockey north of the border, but how did it all work out for you, and how did you end up becoming a goaltender? I think uh, my parents always say it was kind of right from when I was born. My mom says I wouldn't stop crying right when I was in the delivery room unless there was a hockey game on the TV, so I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what she says, so I think it was kind of natural from there, and then when I was growing up, my dad would take me out after we would do kindergarten we'd go just in the mornings and then right after we'd be done he'd take me to the hockey rink near us and he'd teach me to skate there so since I was two three years old I've been skating so it was kind of natural from there and then I think becoming a goalie was my brother and I would always my brother's two years younger than me we'd always uh watch the world juniors together and we'd be playing like mini sticks in our basement watching them and I remember in 2006 I think it was 2007 when uh, Carey Price was the goalie for Canada, it won in that shootout. And after that, I was like, I, I was playing goalie every time after that. So 
was that the uh, the Jonathan Taves? I think four shots yeah. in a row he scored, and Carey Price was able to lock things down. Yeah, yeah, that was it. So I think after that, I was hooked. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, had you played forward or defense before that? Were you a skater before that? I guess. And at what point in your career were you becoming a goalie? How old were you at that point? So I was. I played defense before that, and I liked it. Like I never really thought about being a goalie. I always liked it. I think when you were in like when we were six or seven, like you kind of rotate and play goalie a little bit. And then after that shootout, I think I was always just begging my dad to let me play goalie. And he wanted to make me wait until I was like 12, 13, just so I would learn how to skate better um, before I became a goalie. And then I remember I was eight, seven or eight years old, right before our first, like our first rep tryouts. And one of my best friends was a goalie and I was a player and right before the tryouts, he decided he didn't want to play goalie anymore. He wanted to play defense. Then we didn't really, we weren't really going to have any goalies. We didn't think so. My dad finally let me, I was just begging him. He kind of let me uh, switch to goalie. I went to the tryouts and I don't think I was very good, but I was the only goalie there. So it worked out. <laughs> yeah. It works out that way. Right. Was he onto something, I guess, and that the, the normal skater skating helped you out and becoming a goalie or did it really not matter? I think I think it does for sure. I think it's a biggest, a huge thing about being a goalie is being able to move well and be comfortable in your skates and move around the crease. So I think that kind of skating and that foundation definitely helped me a lot. So at what point did you realize, because you just said right there, you weren't very good from the start when you were a goaltender, but at what point did you kind of put things together and you're like, all right, I'm pretty good and maybe I can do something with this? Um, I think, well, I mean, I think just throughout that first year, I was playing so much, so I got so much better I think probably from the start of the year to the end of the year and then kind of after that I felt like I was you know obviously young but pretty good and started to have some confidence and then I think just as I got older our team was always pretty good I was always playing a lot of games we were winning a lot so kind of as I got older I kind of realized there might be something there and then actually I would play uh, baseball in the summers growing up and I would always I would always flip flop on what I wanted to do, like, because I knew eventually I would kind of have to make a choice. And I would say in the summers, I would say I was going to be a baseball player. Like I'm going to be done with hockey in the winters. I'd say I'll be a hockey player and I'll be done with baseball. And then when it finally came to make a choice, our hockey team was better than our baseball team. And I was kind of more of my good friends were playing hockey. So that's kind of what I chose. And then obviously it uh, worked out pretty well. Oh, interesting. I was going to ask you if you played any other sports, what position did you play in baseball? I was a shortstop mostly. They had me. Uh, they had me at catcher one year. They thought it'd be a nice transition, but I couldn't stand it. I didn't like blocking the balls. It hurt too much. Yeah, blocking a baseball is a little bit different than stopping a puck, right? The puck, you've got a lot more padding to protect yourself, and stopping a baseball, it's bouncing off your arms and your legs. I was a catcher growing up, so I understand that pain. But uh, safe to say, you're a pretty athletic kid then, playing shortstop, and obviously, you need to be a great athlete to play goaltender that athleticism I'd have to say has probably helped you a lot so far in your career right yep yep I think so I mean we were always growing up outside doing stuff playing baseball hockey golf tennis basketball football whatever it was so I think just naturally you kind of become a good athlete from doing that and being outside and I think that's been huge for me as a goalie now so you played in the OHL with the Barry Colts how did you make it there tell me about the process between you know first becoming a goaltender and then being in the OHL with Barry? Um, I think I was, uh, like I said, we always had a pretty good team growing up. So we were kind of, we'd be in big tournaments and you kind of get scouted through there, I guess, through Bantam and Minor Midget. And then when I was in Minor Midget, I was drafted, I think, in the third round to Barry. So then from there, it was kind of a decision of whether I wanted to play in Barry or go to go to school and play there and then I played when I was 16 I played in Guelph in junior B which is pretty much home for me just outside of Cambridge and then uh, the next year I kind of had to make that decision and we just felt like it was a really good fit in Barry it was close to home and there was going to be a good opportunity for myself to continue to grow there and that's kind of what we went with and obviously it uh, worked out all right. 
So how'd you make that choice? Because you mentioned going to school potentially. I mean, was that really a real opportunity for you and something you were deeply considering? And how did you end up making that choice to forego going the college route and going to the OHL? Um, I think growing up, actually, like school is for my parents, school is really important. And my mom will never say it, but I think if she could have chose, she probably would have had me go to school then. Um, but I think it was just, uh, I just, we felt like the timing was right to be able to play in the OHL the next season. Instead of if I was going to school, it probably would have had to be a three, four year wait before I even entered. So we felt like me playing in the OHL was probably the best chance to turn pro sooner, which was the ultimate goal. So we kind of made that decision. And my mom made me promise when I was going to the OHL that I'll get my degree anyways. So that'll come at some point. Were you considering any schools? Like, had it gotten that far? Or was it just like, okay, we're going to go to the OHL rather than start this whole process? Or had you started that process with the NCAA? Um, I wasn't, I was, I was so young, so I wasn't getting recruited too much. I think I visited University of Michigan, which I probably shouldn't say on this podcast, but. <laughs> no, it's hey, Ken Johnson plays there right now. It's okay. Yeah. I, uh, I visited there. I visited Princeton, Cornell. So there were a few, but it was so early in the process. So it wasn't, it wasn't anything too serious. All right. Fair enough there. And, you know, it is a much different path developmentally, right? Going the college route compared to going to the OHL, because you mentioned those years that you have to play leading into college. And, you know, you might have been a 20, 21 year old freshman in the NCAA compared to getting that development and playing that NHL style schedule right away in the uh, CHL, no matter where you are, whether it's the Q, WHL, or the OHL. So yeah, definitely a, a big decision, I feel like, for all kids that are fortunate to be good enough at hockey to have that decision on their plate, right? But a big decision nonetheless. Tell me uh, what it was like to play in the OHL, because as an American myself, I just find that so cool that it's almost uh, its own version of pro hockey or like a minor league league up there that people take it so seriously. So what was that like? Yeah, I mean, like you said, it's almost like pro pro hockey for teenagers. So it was a really big jump at first. I mean, you're playing in front of so many people and you're so young. Like, it's kind of a weird thing where there's the expectations of like pro hockey, you're playing so many games and you obviously you're expected to play well and perform. And also you're 16, 17 years old, living away from home for the first time. Like, there's so much stuff you don't even know how to do or Kind of, so it's kind of a, uh, an interesting experience. You're kind of becoming more independent and maturing off the ice as well as on the ice. You're playing so many games and you're getting so much better on the ice. So I think it was, I think playing in the OHL really helped me prepare for pro hockey because it's obviously a similar pro style environment, except for, I guess, since you're younger, they can kind of, they kind of guide you through it a little more because they understand, obviously, you're 16, 17 years old. So it's a really nice transition, I think, into pro hockey. Yeah, for sure. And you were fortunate to be coached by uh, an NHL legend your first year in Barry and Dale Howarchuk. What did he mean to your game? He was awesome. I think something I always tell people is you hear so many stories about how good of a person Dale was and just kind of the legend that he was. And I honestly think the stories underrate how, like, underrate that. Like, they don't even they don't even tell the really the full truth. Like it was, we would play like a, an away game in Sudbury. Say we lose, we'd be leaving the rink at 11, 11 PM, going to get home at two, 3 AM, be freezing cold outside. And he'd sign every single autograph for everybody outside, like never complain anything like that. So he was, he was so good to all of us. I mean, we, he's turned a lot of guys from Barry into pro players that are now in the NHL and having success in pro hockey. But I think he was just, he taught us, one, how to be good people and have good habits, be on time, things like that. And he also really taught us how to understand the game. He was really big on watching a lot of hockey, making sure we're going home, studying the game, understanding it. So I think kind of those things I really took away from him. But just, just the person that he was was awesome. Yeah, beyond the X's and O's of, of being on the ice, you see how to be a pro, right? Even a guy that's past his pro career, you see him going out and signing those autographs. That has to make a huge impact. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was, uh, it's really special to see kind of how he is up close. And the crazy thing was, he's probably even at the age he was then, he's probably the best player I've ever been on the ice with. Like he would play three on three with us and 
he couldn't really skate as well as he obviously could when he played then, but he would still never turn the puck over. He'd make no look passes. And he probably, in all the shots he ever took on me, I probably have a 30% save percentage on him. Like, I think he scored every single one. So he's by far the best player I've ever seen on the ice. Oh, very interesting there. Now, before we get into a little bit more about hockey, I want to go back a couple of questions here. You said that you promised your mom you would get your degree after hockey, or I don't know if you plan on doing it during the summers, whatever, but have you thought about what that's all going to look like and how you're going to do it? No, I haven't. I mean, when I was, when I was in the OHL, we'd take a few classes like online through some schools there. So just kind of shipping away, getting some credits under my belt, but I haven't, I probably haven't put enough thought into it, but uh, she stays on me. So we'll make sure it gets done. Do you have any idea what you're going to study or, I mean, obviously you're in your first pro season uh, right now. So you're young in your, your hockey career, but do you have an idea of what you'd be interested in potentially after hockey? Um, I'm not sure. I think uh, biology is pretty interesting. I think uh, I've been kind of reading about oceanographers and what they do. I think that might be uh interesting thing to kind of travel and see uh see different uh different things in the world and kind of understand it from that perspective so maybe something there but uh, I'll probably have to look into it a little more were you a good student growing up I mean that's a, a little bit off the board of an answer right there if you're talking to a hockey player you know what I mean that's pretty interesting yeah I mean I uh I did all right in school yeah what do you like to do in your free time now that uh you've gone off the board with uh, that that answer so I'm a little bit interested what do you like to do in your free time um I try to read a lot of books I mean like I said my parents are huge on reading I think we had a bookshelf in every room in our home growing up so read a lot of books uh we got into playing chess a lot this year actually a few of us here have been playing we kind of play on our road trips to fill times but uh we'll do that watch movies nothing crazy was it the Queen's Gambit that got everybody into chess? I know that had an effect on people. I think that's kind of was the start for a few of us. I remember watching that, and after that, I was kind of hooked. So I've just been trying to learn it. It's still, still kind of at the early stages, but uh, yeah. And then when we're home in the summers, we like any other hockey player, we golf, golf a lot, skate and work out in the mornings, and then golf in the afternoon. So it's a nice balance. Yeah, that's the life right there. Uh, do you have an all-time favorite book that you could pinpoint one and say, yeah, that's the one for me? I think probably The Outsiders. That's okay. probably my favorite book and probably my favorite movie. So that's kind of, uh, that one was a classic for me. All right, let's talk about getting into pro hockey and becoming a member of the Blue Jackets organization. So you finish up in Barrie. And then what happens? Are a bunch of different teams approaching you? Is it just a few teams approaching you? And how do you make that decision? Um, so I, I'd come after my 17-year-old year, after my first year in the OHL, I'd come to Columbus for a development camp there. And then uh, we felt like I had a pretty good camp, started to build that relationship with Manny and with the staff here. So we kind of stayed in contact through my next couple seasons in Barrie. And then we didn't have a season for my 19 year old year, which kind of made things a little different. And then <clears throat> this summer we were kind of thinking about, do I turn pro? Do I go back? Cause I could still be in junior this season. So then uh, Manny and kind of the blue jacket staff had talked to my agent in the summer and they talked about me turning pro this year and kind of getting me into that. So we just felt like it was such a good fit here. This was an organization that I really wanted to be a part of. And we felt like me turning pro now we felt like I was ready for it and we thought this would be kind of the best thing for my development and to go from here. So I think it was kind of a natural decision and we felt like it was a really comfortable fit here with the Blue Jackets. How do you pick where you're going to go for development camp? How does that work? Um, I kind of, I had a few teams that were, we were kind of choosing from and my agents just kind of said, look at the, uh, look at the depth charts, do some research on the organizations, things like that. And, uh, kind of look from there. And I think at the time Columbus had Corpy was here, Elvis was here, Bob had just left and then Terry was drafted here. And then I don't know that there were that many other guys in the system at that point. So compared to some of the other spots, we felt like there might be an opportunity here to kind of make an impression and work my way, work my way in that way. So I think that was kind of the biggest thing, just looking at the depth chart and looking at the organization. So what were your expectations when you signed? Because you obviously started this season in the East Coast League with Kalamazoo. 
You've also seen time and played very, very well with the Blue Jackets AHL affiliate in Cleveland. And then obviously you just signed your entry level deal where you got your call up to the Blue Jackets and got to back up for a couple of games. So, you know, what were your expectations going in and how has this season kind of worked in regards to those expectations? Has it even maybe exceeded expectations based off of what's happened? Yeah, I mean, I think the the unique thing about being a goalie is you never know what's going to happen. I mean, even if you're if you're a fifth goalie in an organization, you're two, three injury, injuries away from being in the NHL. So I think it's – I wasn't really thinking too much about where I was going to be or anything like that. It was more just about – getting that experience in pro hockey and trying to play as well as I could and learn and improve as much as I could and kind of just take it day to day that way and see what happens. And then I think obviously things have worked out pretty well and we've been fortunate that way that there's been some opportunities. I mean, obviously you never want to see anybody get hurt. Like it sucks that Terry's hurt as he is right now, but it's kind of just happens sometimes. And, that's kind of just the situation right now. So it's just taking advantage of the opportunities that come. Yeah, that's exactly what you've done. What are your, uh, what are your thoughts on the pro game? How does it compare to a junior? Um, it's different for sure. I think obviously everyone's bigger, faster, stronger. I think the one thing we felt was there's just a lot more traffic in pro hockey and junior guys are smarter about where they put themselves. So it's just been about understanding how to deal with that and kind of be effective through traffic. It's probably been a, big adjustment. Talk to me about the success that you've had in Cleveland as of late. I mean, you're red hot right now. So uh, what do you think has led to that success? Just more and more experience at the pro level and you're getting comfortable with the game or are you just playing well right now? Um, Yeah, I think I just feel like I've just been getting more and more comfortable with the more games I've played at each level. So I think that definitely plays a role in it. And I think our team's been playing really well too. We've kind of turned a corner and started to put put together a lot of good performances so I think it's always it's always nice to play behind a great team so I think that's a big part of it I'm really intrigued by the locker room dynamic for the Cleveland Monsters this season because it's a good mix of guys I feel like there's some veterans that have been there for a while some older players that have plenty of pro experience and then there's a nice mix of young guys in their first or second year within the Blue Jackets organization so how's that dynamic been Yeah, it's awesome. It's kind of like you said, it's a really good balance, especially for myself as the youngest guy there. It's kind of, uh, it's nice to be able to have young guys that are kind of going through the same thing and we can kind of talk about those experiences and work through them. And it's also great to have those older guys that we can lean on and ask questions to and kind of get some guidance from them. So it's a really nice balance there. What are some of the things you're working on right now? Or maybe we should go back and say at the beginning of this season, what were some things that you wanted to improve in your game? Where are those things now? And what do you continue to work on? Um, I think going into this season, something we had talked about a lot was just making sure my posture was good in the net, making sure that I'm presenting myself well, making sure that on entries we're kind of having flow and just really just allowing myself to be athletic, I think. My athleticism and my reads and my hands are a big part of my game. So something we talked about with Manny and with Tease was just making sure that we really allowed those parts to to show in my game and kind of make the most of them. So I think that's been the focus. And now kind of those have gotten a little bit more consistent, but it's still building those habits and just continuing to build a really good foundation in my game as I go forward. You're a little bit undersized of a goaltender I mean, in today's standards, you talked about Daniil Tarasov earlier. He's massive at six foot five. Elvis Merzlik and Scorpio, they're both six foot three. And that's kind of the trend you see across the National Hockey League. Goalies are getting bigger and bigger. So what do you have to do to kind of make up for that? Because, you know, we've seen it in the Blue Jackets organization before. Vaini Vevelainen was a guy who was similar to your size, and he was able to have some success, and he got an NHL call up just like you did. So do you have to just be that much better when it comes to the athleticism, the reads, the hands, those things that you talked about to kind of make up for that? Or do you really not see a difference? Oh, I mean, I never, I've never really thought about it. I mean, people, people naturally ask about it and it kind of becomes a topic of conversation. But I think that that difference, I think once you're in the games, it becomes a little bit less and it's just about understanding what works for you. So maybe there's a play where I'll have to be a little more aggressive or, I'll have to find a different sight line through traffic, just little things like that. But I think at the end of the day, if you're finding pucks, if you're skating well, if you're being an athlete, I think regardless of size, I think you'll have success. So 
yeah, if, if you're good, you're good, right? And right? It obviously probably makes it a little bit easier to be bigger. You take up more of the net, but even big guys can struggle. So if you're good, you're good. It's, it's working for you right now. Um, as this season continues and, and really going into this off season and next season, what are some of your goals going forward? Um, I think I just want to keep developing, make sure that I uh, stay disciplined in my processes and my, the way I take care of myself, the way I'm producing and working on the ice. I think it's just about, like I said, continuing to build those good foundations going forward as a pro so that when the opportunities come, I'll be ready and be comfortable and kind of prepared for them. So I think it's just continuing to grow and what we've been working on. What do goalies work on during the summer? I think it's a lot of skating. A lot of skates with my goalie coach back home will just be no pucks at all, just skating through the crease. So I think it's just making sure you're really efficient and comfortable in the crease. And then like anybody else, you'll work out and make sure your body's healthy and recovered from the season and going to be healthy for the seasons going forward. But it's just uh, a lot of skating and, again, building those foundations and continuing to get more and more comfortable in the crease. All right, I've got two more questions for you. I don't want to keep you too much longer because I appreciate the time. Appreciate you taking this time out of your day. First thing I'll ask you, who are some of the goaltenders that you watch now that you kind of try and model yourself after, if any? Um, I think, obviously, all the goalies in this organization are all great to watch. Corpy, Elvis, Terry, Rubes, Cam Johnson, all of them are always really good to watch. I mean, being close to them, I think. Uh, growing up, I was a big fan of of Bob so I kind of I love to watch him um UC Saros I like to watch in Nashville he's obviously had a lot of success uh, in the last few years so I think there's a lot of similarities between our games um I mean there's there's so many good goalies Shesterkin, Sorokin a lot of a lot of really good goalies in the league so there's there's so many guys you can watch and kind of pick things from all right, the last thing I got to ask you here, it's obviously the big cliche with goaltenders that they're a little bit different than the average hockey player, right? And I think it's fair to say after talking with you, you, you uh, I think, approach things a little bit differently than a lot of the, the Blue Jackets and prospects that I talk to. But in your experience, would you say it's fair to say that goalies do have maybe a screw loose or they're a little bit different when it comes to approaching the game? I mean, you hear it a lot, but I, I, I don't know. I think it... Uh... There's definitely some things probably that people would say are a little bit different, but I don't know. The one thing I always say is I think a player blocking a shot is a lot more crazy than a goalie blocking a shot. So I don't know. Maybe we got to flip the script. That's a good point. Fair enough, Jet. I really appreciate the time. It was great getting to know you. You're uh, you're an impressive guy, and I'm hoping that you and I are talking uh, here in Columbus sooner rather than later. I'm looking forward to getting to know you that much more. Yeah, that would be awesome. Thanks for having me. So don't you see what I mean now? What a guy. Really, really interesting. And no matter what happens to Jet Greaves as a hockey player or where he goes within the Blue Jackets organization, after that, I am always going to be rooting for Jet Greaves. And really, I can't wait for him to be back in Columbus, whether uh, it's at next season's training camp or uh, if he's really one of the Blue Jackets goaltenders at some point. So I'm really, really excited to talk to Jet Greaves again, get to know him that much more. And I hope you guys feel the same way now. That was a, a terrific interview. I think in a great way uh, to get to know more about an interesting Blue Jackets prospect and a new Blue Jackets prospect. But uh, right now, we're going to welcome in Blue Jackets goaltending development coach Brad Thiessen to hear a little bit more about what the Blue Jackets as an organization think about Jet Greaves. Tell me about your first impressions of Jet Greaves now that you've had a little bit of time with him because I just got done talking to Jet and I was really impressed. He seems like a really smart guy and kind of a different guy for a hockey player. He's interested in some different things. So what were your first impressions of the guy? Yeah, well, funny enough, I mean, our first meetings with Jet were, I think it was a 2018 or 19 development camp when he, he was invited uh, to come out um, to take part in that. And, and uh, just meeting him there was kind of the first uh, interactions we had and, and just a, a super quality kid. Like he's just, you know, he's, he's an infectious personality, uh, someone everyone kind of wants to, to gravitate towards and be around. And, um, you know, he made a, a great impression on, on everyone in the organization for that camp. And, um, you know, obviously uh, circling back around and uh, being able to find him uh, this past summer, we were really excited about that opportunity to have him in the fold then. Obviously, terrific guy off the ice, but what makes him a special player on the ice and somebody that the Blue Jackets organization values? Yeah, he's... Uh, He's very uh, self-aware about his game. He's, uh, you know, he's someone that 
when we're we're watching video or we're talking to him about some of the things that maybe we've seen uh, in his game, he's he's very open to them and he's he puts them into practice right away. He's he's super uh, intelligent, um, you know, hockey wise. He knows his game really well. Um, he's he's a technical guy. He likes to you know watch watch his video and kind of pick apart different things. Um, and he's he's just very very smart. Just someone who's you know, I remember even at the beginning of the season. Um, he came into camp and there was just a couple little things that we wanted to tweak in his game and, and right away into the exhibition game, you know, he's putting those into practice and, and uh, you know, those things of, you know, that ability of his has really helped him take off this year. What are some of those things that when he became part of the Blue Jackets organization and going into camp and going into this regular season, what are some of those things you saw in his game that you wanted to shore up? Yeah, well, honestly, one of the big things for him, which we were super excited about was, you know, when we first saw him a couple of years ago, he was, you know, five foot 11. And, and uh, um, obviously for him being the OHL last year, he didn't get to play hockey. And so nobody saw him. And, and uh, you know, coming back this year, we were able to get a look at him at a, a prospects camp um, that was put together by OHL uh, kids in the summertime. So I was able to watch him there and he'd grown six foot one. So we were super excited about that, uh, that development in his game. But um, you know, some of the little things that we, we've talked about this year are some of his, his triggers just, you know, after the post save, get into his next spots really quick. He's very good at reading the game, but, um, you know, we want him to just pick his pace up a little bit now that he's in pro hockey and, and that's something that he's done really well. Um, fighting through through screens, something that, you know, in pro hockey, there's there's a lot of big bodies that he's got to deal with and, and uh, try and fight for his space in the crease and find, uh, you know, those, those sight lines on the releases. So, He's done a really good job um, doing that. And, um, you know, for, for a kid who, you know, like I said, didn't play hockey last year and coming into this year was expected to, to get a, you know, a healthy dose of East Coast Hockey League action and, and uh, just kind of gain pro experience. He jumped in to, you know, his opportunity here in the American League and done an awesome job. How much have you seen him grow just this season? Because you talk about that development and, and how he puts different things into his game as soon as you guys mention them to him. How much have you seen him grow and develop this year? Because I think the expectation was to see him in the East Coast League a little bit more than he has been there. He's actually been in the American League and performed quite well. So what have you thought of his game and how he's developed? Yeah, he's been great. I mean, he's, um, you know, accepted the, uh, you know, I don't say the demotion, but the, you know, kind of the the beginning plan that we had from we laid it out at the beginning when we we knew that being in the East Coast League was going to be the best for his development at the beginning of the season and just play games, just trying to get used to pro hockey and uh, what that all brings with the you know the long travel and and busy schedules and three games in three days and things like that that um, you know he hasn't been used to with being out of hockey for the last year so. You know, he took that in stride. We were in constant communication with him, just kind of seeing where he was at and, and uh, watching his, his game film and things like that from being in Kalamazoo and then being up here in Cleveland. Um, you know, he didn't look out of place right away jumping into the American Hockey League. He was, um, you know, right away he had that confidence in the net and he has a lot of confidence in himself and in his game and he's not going to, you know, sit back and, and just kind of wait for things to happen. He's going to go out there and try and take control and um, he's done that and, and he's, he's earned the, the confidence of our coaches here and, and, the, and the players that are playing in front of him. They, they love playing uh, in front of him and go to bat for him every night. He earned his first NHL call up a little bit earlier this season. And at that point for the Blue Jackets, it was more so out of necessity, just based off of injuries and things like that. But in the process, the Blue Jackets signed him to an entry level contract. And what I had heard is that you know, the Blue Jackets needed him to come up at that point, but that he had earned that entry-level contract. I mean, is that the case for you, that the Blue Jackets have really been impressed by what he's been able to do this season, and now he should be considered a prospect for this organization? Yeah, 100%. He was, uh, you know, something that, that had been talked about, um, you know, before it kind of became a necessity at that time, um, but someone that we're really, really excited about to be able to work with, uh, you know, for the rest of this year and, and two more years following. Um, you know, we definitely see a bright future in, in him and, and uh, just the progress that he's made this year, um, you know, has definitely uh, opened some eyes in this organization. I think, um, you know, starting at, at development camp and, and going to Traverse City and how well he did there. And, and uh, you know, a lot of people probably never heard of Jack Reeves before, but he's put his name on the map and, and uh, someone that, you know, this organization is excited about here going forward. 
do you consider him an undersized goalie whatsoever? Because you talked about he was 5'11", now he's six foot one. but do you still consider him an undersized goalie? And, and what are some of the challenges for goaltenders that are maybe under the usual norm? Because nowadays you see guys that are 6'6", six 6'5", six, six mm-hmm. a lot of big guys in the Blue Jackets organization. Then there's Jet. Yeah. No, he's, uh, you know, I don't think we like to put limits as far as us in the, in the goalie department uh, on, on size for our goalies. I, you know, for Jet, we see a lot of, you know, we, we try and use a comparable like UC Saros and someone who's had a ton of success in the NHL and being someone who's not, you know, that typical uh, six foot four goalie, um, but being able to use his strengths and Jet's strengths are being able to read the game, a uh, very good skater. Um, you know, he puts himself in a position where he's, he's there waiting for the shot and he's not chasing the game around. And when you're a little bit, you know, I guess undersized, as you say, um, you know, those are some of the things that you have to do to be, um, to make up for that. And when you are in position and when you are, you know, such a good skater, such a good athlete, someone who reads plays and and know what's going to happen even before it does, um, you know, then that size issue doesn't become as big of an issue because he's always there and in the spot that he needs to be. I have a bit of a technical question for you, and it's something that Jet brought up. Um, he said that his dad wouldn't let him become a goaltender until he really got skating down. He wanted him to be a skater until he was like 12 or 13 years old. And I asked Jet if he thinks that benefited his game, and you talk about the skating right there. And, you know, I'm sure the skating is a little bit different for goaltenders than it is forwards and defensemen. But do you see that as a potential benefit for Jet's game? He's obviously a really athletic kid as well. Mm-hmm. But just the fact that he did skate the way he did for a long time, do you think that could help? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think, um, you know, a lot of times you hear, uh, you know, when kids are younger, you can't skate, I'll just throw them in the net because, <laughs> you know, there's not that much room. You don't have to move around that much, right? So, um, you know, that's kind of the old thing. But I think for goalies now, like, you have to be able to skate. You have to be able to get around the crease. And, uh, you know, guys who kind of sit down and are, are forced to slide around the crease and, and you know, I, I call it chasing the game. You know, if you're doing that, then then you're not going to, you might make the first save, but after that, you, you might be in trouble. So being able to skate, being able to hold your feet, um, you know, hold your edges, things like that, you know, those are going to put yourselves in better positions to make saves rather than, you know, having to, to, to try and rely on strictly athleticism or strictly size. Um, you know, being able to have a combination of those things and skating is kind of the, the foundation that we're looking for in our goalies there. I don't want to ask you to predict the future, but, I mean, he's obviously uh... – come such a long way in this past year within the Blue Jackets organization so what are your hopes for Jet Greaves what are your goals for Jet Greaves as this season progresses and and where do you see this guy fitting in in the Blue Jackets organization going forward yeah obviously um you don't want to get too far out of yourself I mean he's a you know first year first year pros um learning this um you know the lifestyle of the, the game everything that kind of comes along with it and he's he's taking it all in stride and making huge uh, huge leaps as he's come here um, so far this year. And um, he's a kid who's, he's not going to stop. He's not going to stop till he gets to where he wants to be. And that's going to be in the NHL. And, um, you know, we're excited to, to work right alongside with him to try and get him there. And, uh, you know, I don't see any reason why that can't be something that he's, he's going to achieve at some point here in this organization. Cause he's, you know, he's got all the abilities and all the talents and uh, definitely has the work ethic and the character to do it as well. So, um, you know, Obviously, uh, you know, you let the development process kind of play itself out and, and uh, you see where that takes him, but we're, we're excited to see where that goes for him. Would you say he's trending in the right direction right now? Because I know he's performed really well for the Monsters of later. There's still some things you're looking to pinpoint in his game and looking to, to progress in his game as this season finishes up. Yeah, no, he's definitely trending. He's trending upwards for sure. He's, he's done a great job and um, you know, there's always little things that we're working on in his game and, and we're sitting down together and, and uh, you know, watching the video of, uh, you know, different situations that he's seen in, in the games and different technical things that we might see here and there. But, um, you know, just being able to, to put together a string of starts that he has recently, especially, and kind of grab the ball here in Cleveland and be the guy who's been counted on uh, lately for, uh, you know, some big games as we try and get points here down the stretch. You know, these are are really good experiences for him, uh, especially as a first year guy. And I think, um, you know, after the season's over and going forward, these will be things that he'll look back on and be, uh, you know, thankful and, and uh, be able to draw on that experience as, uh, as the years go on. 
All right, Brad, last thing I'll ask you here, and I appreciate the time. How are you liking the new role within the Blue Jackets organization? You're not playing anymore, and I know you were kind of a player coach for the Monsters for the past couple of seasons, but now that you're, I guess, more so away from the ice, how are you enjoying things? Yeah, it's been great. It's been, uh, you know, a really, uh, I don't want to say easy transition, but the fact that I was be able to kind of be a player coach the last few years is kind of you know, gave me a little glimpse into, you know, what the coaching world was like, and I wasn't stepping into a blind. So, you know, that's kind of helped out a lot. Um, you know, we have a great staff here in Cleveland that I enjoy working with every day um, as a, you know, goaltending department as a whole with Manny and Nick Bastrom. It's, it's you know, it's a, an awesome opportunity to work with those guys and, and pick their brains, um, you know, such a, a lot of knowledge that they have to give. Um, and then also just being able to coach, but also do some of the scouting stuff too. And, and, uh, you know, kind of uh, get a little look into that world and, and uh, be, uh, you know, have the opportunity to go and watch uh, draft eligible kids and try and, and get ready for, for that process. Well, it's been a good year and a lot, of, a lot of learning, but a lot of fun too. All right, I lied. I have one more thing because you piqued my interest <laughs> there. Um, what is the communication like between you, Manny, and Nick Backstrom? Is it like a group of guys and you guys are frequently communicating or is it everybody's kind of doing their own thing? No, there's great communication. You know, Nick was actually over here in North America uh, a couple weeks ago. So we had a, a meeting down in Columbus, which was great to see face to face. But we're on, you know, Zoom calls or texts or emails and just kind of, um, you know, shooting different things around. Manny and I, uh, you know, mostly about, um, you know, the goal in our organization right now between Columbus and Cleveland and, you know, what he's seen in our guys. And, and uh, you know, maybe there's different call situations or, things like that and then um you know obviously we don't have any any you know kind of prospects or, or guys in development and juniors are over in Europe right now so most of the draft stuff um you know is, is a combination of the three of us with Nick doing a lot of stuff in Europe and Manny and I do in North America and then being able to watch video and then you know kind of bounce each other bounce ideas and you know what we're seeing in different kids and and uh so it's been a great collaboration I would say between the three of us and uh, you know I've really enjoyed that that side of things all right well good and that interests me so I'll be sure to ask you about that in the future I'm I want to know more about goalie scouting and things like that because we don't you don't hear a lot about that when it comes to hockey right you hear about the sexy forwards and defensemen and that yeah. sort of thing but the goaltenders are are still kind of a forgotten commodity I feel like so I'll make sure to yeah, ask no, you about that in the future for sure it's been uh you know, as, as over the last few years, especially, I think goalie, you know, departments, I guess, or scouting and things like that have been a little bit more prevalent in the NHL. And, and I think it's, uh, you know, it's only good for the goalie community because, you know, goalies are, are pretty important in there. So it's uh, important that we have the resources. And I think Columbus done a great job of, of allocating those resources to the goalies. So. Yeah, definitely. Well, Brad, I appreciate the time and uh, I'll talk to you again soon. All right. Uh, thanks, Tom. Again, that's Blue Jackets goaltending development coach Brad Teeson. Great to talk to Brad. He's a first-time guest on the Pipeline podcast, hopefully not a last-time guest either. I think he had a lot of good things to say, and that's a position that I feel like we don't really talk about a whole lot, right? At least when it comes to the prospects and the development process, goaltending still is a little bit of an unknown when it comes to the average hockey fan or really even the more in-depth hockey fan, the super hockey fan. It's almost like People that aren't goaltenders don't know a lot about goaltenders. Do you know what I mean? Like, you have to be a goalie to know a lot about goalies. But great to get that insight there from Brad Teeson. And I think that'll do it for this week's edition of the Pipeline Podcast. I don't want to go too, too long because we've already stretched uh, pretty well beyond where we already go in the 30 or so minute range for the Pipeline Podcast. So with all that in mind, let me say one more time. Thanks again to Brad Teeson for joining me this week on the Pipeline Podcast. Great big thank you to Jet Greaves. Loved, loved, loved getting to know Jet Greaves. So thanks again to Jet. And as always, thank you for joining me. Hope you enjoyed this week's edition of the Pipeline Podcast. Can't wait to talk to you next time.